This is the FYI Podcast, and we are your hosts. I'm Josiah Canaley. And I'm Mikey Canaley. And this is episode two. Can you believe it, babe? I can believe it because we just did episode one, so and, we're here. And just since launching, like, I mean, last week, we have seen dozens. I bet close to 50 people have sent in questions. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> there's some good ones. So you're making our job hard, but good to, to narrow down mm-hmm. questions. And speaking of questions, we want to hear from you. So you can send us a DM on Instagram. You could also mm-hmm. fill out the form at www.fyi-podcast.com. Today's question, going to kick it over to Carson from North Dakota. And Carson basically is asking, is there the one? Is there the one? Like he's asking, is there the one or, you know what I mean? Is there only one? Is there only one? Yeah. What do you think, Micah? Well, I think we had this conversation. Actually, we were at a camp and a retreat uh, for young adults a few months back, right? right? And we were asked this question, similarly to this question. And it was a female saying, well, is there the one? And I think with our my initial rational thinking was just like, well, if there's only one for, for everyone, everyone <laughs> around the world, we are probably all married literally to the wrong person. If just that's by the logical case. math, just by <laughs> logical math. I mean, do that for a second. Cause if one person marries wrong, then the whole world of relationships is off kilter. Right. And upset. Right. So yeah, I think that's a, a valid question. I think it's an important question. I think it's something that many individuals, including myself, was uh, wrestling with. Is there the one? And I think my prayer has been, Lord, help me to just become the one that you have for me and be with my spouse. And one tactic, I will say, this is not the answer to the question, but one of my prayers was this, Lord, when I enter any room when my future spouse sees me, I want them to have eyes for me and for me alone and vice versa. So if Josiah were to walk into a room of 50 women, I want myself to be the only one that stands out and everybody else to fade away. Yep. When I enter a room, if it's full of men, I want to see him and have everybody else fade away. And I truly do that. God can help sift through weed out and remove the distractions. And I'll say some men and some women are presented with many opportunities of relationship along the way. And one thing I feel we fail to do sometimes is pray before we pursue or pray before we allow somebody to pursue. Say that again, Micah. One thing that we fail to do is pray before we pursue or allow ourselves to be pursued. Oh my gosh. And, and I've been there. I've been guilty of that. But I remember in a season when I was praying specifically for Josiah, I had met him, come across him. And I was praying two things. One, I'll share with you guys. I was praying for Josiah as just a friend. Lord, I pray for Josiah as a friend, be with him, protect him, work in his heart, bless him, use him, whatever those prayers were. And they are at that time. And then the second one is like, Lord, I pray for my future spouse. So those are two very different prayers, but I did pray. I'm like, Lord, if Josiah is my future spouse, because there's many things that he had um, exhibited that I've been praying for what I know I value in a relationship. I'm like, Lord, if those two prayers overlap and become a one relationship of marriage, I put it in your hands. I pray that. Now, do you notice that I said, I pray, I prayed for Josiah If he was the one Lord reveal that to me, I didn't say, Lord, make him the one, because so many times I think in our brain in our small human brain, we can convince ourselves no matter what end we're on, we can convince ourselves that this person can be, or is the one. And we never invite God into that conversation. Right. And then we find ourselves dating and I I've been guilty of this. So ladies and gentlemen, like in a previous relationship for seven years, recognizing that I was praying, Lord, make so-and-so the one I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. I, 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 I never said, Lord, I surrender to you. I was just saying, Lord, make them the one. And then trying to convince myself that it could work, should work. 
but it was never supposed to work because God had something else for them as well as something else and better for me. And I think that the moment an opportunity to date somebody becomes an obligation, it's a good indicator that's probably not the one that God has for you. And do you remember what I said about Andy Stanley when he had said about convincing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we love Pastor Andy, North Point Community Church. I mean, he wrote a book and did yeah. a sermon series on this topic and he, he calls it the new rules of love, sex, and dating. Mm -hmm. And one of his things that he said is that if you're trying to convince yourself repeatedly to do something or to not do something, it's probably the wrong thing. Like if you're having to do mental gymnastics and hurdles and convince yourself that this is right, it's you're trying probably. to convince yourself. <laughs> Right. And so I love that from Pastor Andy. Mm -hmm. And also, P.S., highly recommend um, the new rules of love, sex, mm -hmm. dating. I think it might be rebranded now as love, dates, and heartbreaks, yeah. but it's available on the Your Move app. Mm -hmm. um, it's available on YouTube. Right and, now, maybe I yeah, believe it is. So. Of course. And um, fun fact that's off script for a second. I was in Minnesota and I was in either late high school, early college, when I started listening to that podcast, mm -hmm. you were a whole state away right? in North Dakota, listening to the same content. Yep. So and that the same time as yep, well. Yep. That loves love dates and heartbreaks or new rules of love, sex dating from North Point Community Church and Pastor Andy Stanley. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's fascinating about his content is he talks about like doing a one year challenge mm -hmm. of no dating. Mm -hmm. And it's not legalism. It's not, you know, Hey, it's, it's like to Micah's point, something you said earlier right. about becoming the one. Right. And so we now, like we both did that challenge in different States and God really, mm -hmm. like we invited God into our singleness. Mm -hmm. And then that led to a transformed dating process, engagement, marriage. Right. And it's not been all perfect mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Happily ever after there's challenges all the time, right. but I do believe that we honor God and God is honoring that of inviting him to right. be the center of our yeah. relationship. Yep. And, and here, you know, getting back to the question, something you said earlier, Micah was like, your goal was to become the one, right? My goal was to become the one. Here's what I believe is the answer to Carson's mm -hmm. question today. And then we'll elaborate a little more on it is that I believe that they become the one when you marry them. You know what I mean? So there, there might be free will, if you want to use that term, or there is the opportunity that God would bless maybe several different options of who you might mm -hmm. marry. But when you pray mm -hmm. and invite God to be the center, and then you pursue, you pray, then you pursue. Right then that person becomes the one. So there might not just be only one person that you're mm -hmm. romantically, sexually, relationally compatible with. There mm -hmm. might be many, right? but they become the one. Because you choose, like you you're choose choosing love. You're choosing yeah. that relationship. You're choosing to bring them in on all aspects of your life in singleness and dating and marriage engagement. And obviously as time was on, it should progress if that's something that is um, a desire of your heart. So, and here's five fun things that actually came from my youth pastor right. that came from his youth pastor. And I don't know where they came from before that, but we've kind of renamed some of them and kind of made it our own a little bit with right. credit, of course, but um, we kind of label mm -hmm. it five things you need to know mm -hmm. before dating or even holding hands. Mm -hmm. You want to kick us off with that? I'll kick us off right away. And if you're in a place where maybe you're driving, you don't need to take notes, just pause it and come back to it. But if you're in a place, maybe your dorm mm -hmm. or your campus or a setting that's conducive to taking notes, you can draw a hand. You can literally like trace your hand. Right on your steering wheel. Just do it while you're driving. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Do not do that. But yes, we're going to look at the hand today. So five things that you're going to want to take notes on, hopefully it takes a heart and consider or reconsider if you are in a relationship. And that's number one. This is the most, we start with this one because it's the most important yeah. in regards to this. It touches literally every other finger. It's an opposable thumb. It's a saddle joint. It has the ability to do what it's called to do, right? So the thumb is actually going to represent Christ, your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, because when you have Christ at the center of your singleness, 
of your dating, of your engagement, and of hopefully your future marriage, it impacts the other four areas. And when all those other areas are failing or floundering, you can always come back to Christ. I love it. It's so it's basically either thumbs up. They love Jesus or thumbs down. This is not a person that we believe you belong with. Right. And you don't have to like us for saying that. Mm -hmm. We just believe that if you're pursuing Christ above all else, mm -hmm. there's some people that you have no business belonging with. Right. And dating and engagement and marriage is so important right. that we, we don't want you to settle in the process for anything less than God's back. God's well, best. Right. And I would say this, like, just because he's a good guy doesn't make him a godly guy. And just yeah. because she's a good gal doesn't make this make that she's a godly gal. I want a good and godly man. I want a good and godly wife. I want a good and godly husband. Like those are some things that you should consider. So when I'm saying good and godly, what I'm saying is that's a thumbs up. That means that there is fruit in their life. They're attending church. They're not being drugged to church, or maybe you're the one that's, you know, behind the other person getting strung along. What we want to say is a thumbs up is kind of like the, the green light of saying, Hey, there's fruitfulness in their life. There's mentors. There are healthy relationships. They have a guy's group, a girl's group, whoever you're talking to, like, yes, go on that first date. If they're claiming to be a Christ follower and their weekend and their life choices are not reflecting that, That's good. I would probably say thumbs down. Yep. Guess what? Girls, guys, it's okay to say no if somebody asks you out. Never feel obligated to go on a first date and then regret it feeling like you missed out on something. Sometimes it's God's way of protecting you from getting into something you should have never gotten into. So and and like funny thing to, uh -oh. to the same thing in reverse, <laughs> like just because they're godly doesn't mean they'll say yes. Right. So like kudos, if you put yourself out there and you share your feelings, like that's part of the process. Mm -hmm. So if somebody says no, that doesn't mean make them a bad Christian, Christian or, or a bad person. Yeah. Um, it just means like, Hey, they don't feel the same way that you do. And that's part of the process. The pointer finger mm -hmm. is stands for the compass. Mm -hmm. And I know in my own life, I want to be oriented with the true North. Mm -hmm the absolute truth, the way, the truth, the life, mm -hmm. that's Jesus. So he, Christ is our compass. And then there's a pointer finger to say like, Hey, what direction mm -hmm. in life are we headed? Are we headed in opposite ways? Because I, I love the idea that if you're in an airplane and you're just one degree off on the map or one degree wayward on the compass, you will result in like multitude of miles mm -hmm by the time you reach mm -hmm. your destination, you'll be in the wrong place. And we think that similarly, that if you're an inch off now, oh, but, 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 oh, oh, but, and we can justify anything, right? Right. And Or convince ourselves of anything. <laughs> and we, we can, and I'm, I'm guilty as charged on that one. And at the same time, like, it's a simple question. Are we headed in the same direction in life. And then well, I say direction can simply just be this and put it into practicality. If one of you is going to school for law and you feel called to a big city and you know that, you know, that, you know, that's what you want to do. And you feel that pressing, you know, and you just know excitement. Yeah. And then you have the other person's like, well, I'm called to Uganda and I'm going to be a nurse in the mission field. 365 days a year. Those are different directions Those in life. Different directions. It's a different compass. And to ask somebody to completely put every single Whoa. one of their dreams, education, and calling on the shelf in like in light of somebody else and come alongside them alone. That's not a healthy way to begin a relationship, let alone start a marriage on, because one of you is going to completely give up everything and resent that and resent that future or resent that future and resent that spouse some way along the way it's going to happen like it's inevitable yeah. and the other person is going to feel the rejection because you're resentful so it's this messy tangle uh web of lies and emotions and unresolved responses to calling and just can cause a lot of angst so if you know that you know that you know that you're called in one direction and the other person is going in the opposite, man alive. It should hopefully be like this, where it just kind of makes sense. And you can be in different lanes and on the same team, but you need to be kind of going down the same highway on some levels. So just it's saying, it's good. I would hate to bump you in the ditch, babe. 
All right. So we got the thumb, we got the pointer finger and we got the middle finger. We know that the middle finger is uh, definitely has its ways to communicate, right? To communicate many different feelings, emotions that we don't endorse (laughs) on this podcast. Right. That's why I have three fingers up, just not the middle finger. Right. Thank you. So the middle finger represents communication. Communication kind of goes back to essentially what we were saying at the beginning. We need to learn how to calmly communicate our feelings, our emotions, our desires, our our pitfalls, our anxieties. And if I can't communicate that as a single young adult with an even keeled head, I'm not saying you're capable of that 100% of the time, but if you are not in tune with how to communicate and how to receive um, anything, correction, in a loving kindness, whatever that is, that makes a difference. So when you learn how to communicate with love and grace and affection, and you can come to somebody with a concern versus come at somebody through your words, that's just going to set you up for success. So I would say even in your singleness, not even in your dating relationships, just as a communicator in and of itself, be mindful of the words that you're saying, the tone that you're using, how you are, you know, coming across how people are perceiving you and just slow down. So I think communication is essential when it comes to relationships. And here's the deal. Even if you are a non-believer listening to this, you're like, I don't even follow Christ. I'm not in a relationship, but I want to be. And I don't care anything that you're saying, you guys, Hey, I respect that. And that's fine. Like if that's where you're at, that's where you're at completely. uh, You're fine. But I also want to say that this is a proven fact. If you talk to any Christian or non-Christian believer or non-believer when it comes to a marriage relationship advice question, many of them will say, what is a key component for your marriage? Like, how do you guys be married for 30 years, 10 years, 50 years? What is that key? They say, ding, 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 ding. Good communication. Yep. And that's a non-believer answer, not even a Christian standpoint, but I'm just saying communication communication. It is vital and it can, our words carry weight and it can either build your marriage up or it can completely tear your marriage down. So we have that's fire Christ compass communication. Josiah, what is that fourth finger? I love this one. This is the ring finger and it stands for commitment. Right. And fun, fun fact, little known fact, my dad is a jeweler and he's been a jeweler since like, I remember going to work with my dad for take your child to work day. And there was a batting cage across the street. And I remember lunch break, we like went and picked up some food and I loved baseball. So we hung out at the batting cages and have fond memories, right? But Mm -hmm. learning about a ring is in the shape of a circle and there's no beginning and there's no end. Mm -hmm. And what's powerful is what's the meaning of marriage? I love the book, Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller, Mm -hmm. Timothy Keller. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he points out in the book is that the Bible begins with marriage Adam and Eve in Genesis, right. the Bible ends with marriage and revelation mm-hmm. of Christ in the church. Right. That book is amazing. Mm-hmm. We highly recommend it. And, um, it impacted our marriage right. and the commitment to God, to each other. Micah, you've okay. said something in the past that I'll just give you credit for here. Uh-oh. And that is uh, a pink flag now is going to be a red flag later. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's with commitment and, mm-hmm. um, If you're going to put a ring on somebody's finger, that is permanent and marriage is God's idea. And Mm -hmm. you you write wedding vows and and it's, it's holy matrimony. Mm -hmm. If that's the goal is a healthy Christian new Testament marriage with Christ as a center, we want to make sure that they're committed to him, meaning Jesus, and that Mm -hmm. we're committed to each other. And so dating is part of that exploring and evaluating and just understanding Mm -hmm. and encouraging each other along the lines of commitment and how we'll end Mm -hmm. is the pinky finger. That's right. And this is how we're ending. But I think oftentimes it's where people start. And where is that like a, right. So I think even before you hold their hand, I think it's the, this one is chemistry. Most people, when you look at somebody like, oh, they're attractive. Oh, they're hot. Oh, blah, blah, fill it in whatever words you want to use there. But I'm just saying that's usually where we, where we begin. And here's the thing, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So sometimes I think we judge a book by its cover too soon. And I think sometimes like, what if they're a Christian and I'm not attracted to them or, you know, 
It doesn't always have to be an initial physical attraction. It can be a personality. It can be a sense of humor. It can be their laugh. It can be their nonverbals. It can just be, you know, aspects of who they are and how they function and how they engage with people. That's, that can be a form of chemistry. It's not just like, oh, do they have great hair? You know, guess what? The grass and everything's going to wither away, mm -hmm. you know, but the soul and their heart and their personality hopefully will just grow and shine brighter as they get older. It's kind of like a seasoned wine, you know, it gets better with age and that process of just being, you know, fermenting and, and being pressed and being squeezed, just like the Bible talks about new wine skins and all those different elements of the, the wine process. Even if you look at the Bible or, or olive oil or whatever you want to use there, but to know that we should, chemistry should be the fifth thing. Right. And, and it's, it's important. You should be attracted to them. And I think sometimes we start there, you know, we right. talk with a lot of young adults, but they're so good looking. Yes, that's probably true. That's probably what drew you to them, but are they following Christ? Um, where are they going in life? Can they communicate? Are they committed mm -hmm. to, to, to you and to a future and to, you know, the school and the program, like, can they make commitments along the way? Cause yeah. if they can't do that in singleness, they most definitely are not going to be able to do that as time progresses towards that marriage. So, well, and one of the things that just kind of jumped into my head and my heart in my mind is, you know, if you've ever seen the movie, great Gatsby, there's uh, a song in there and Lana Del Rey writes this song. And I believe it's actually a cry of a generation and a cry of the human heart. Hmm. She sings, will you still love me when I'm no longer young and beautiful? And I think that's the cry of everybody, every heart, like, Hey, you know what, Mikey, you said it. Like the person who maybe on their wedding day, the guy is like in his peak of the pinnacle of I don't know, physical Life, fitness, fitness or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, and maybe the gal, like maybe she's like dressed Pre baby, up and, <laughs> Right. And all of these things. And over time, you know, if you want to go even back in music history mm -hmm. further, the Beatles, Paul McCartney, he had this hit decades ago and it's still popular. Now he goes, will you still mean me? Will you still love me? Will you still want me when I'm 64? Hmm. And isn't it interesting that it doesn't even need to be a Christian question or a Jesus question, but the human heart eternity really is written on the human heart. Mm -hmm. And I think the cry of all of us, Ben Stewart, he said it best. He said that the two greatest longings of every human heart, you know what they are? Hmm. Intimacy and impact. Wow. Those are eternal things. Those are impactful things. Those are not just superficial surface level things. Those are the things of depth and substance. Right. And, um, you know, we have been talking about relationships mm -hmm. and, um, dating, love, sex, dating, waiting. And it's very possible that you've been thinking about God existence time and space and the universe that's created the creator of the universe and just like having questions theologically or existentially and what we believe here with FYI podcast is that there is a God in heaven who loved you so much that he paid the price of our sins and that is mm -hmm. he sent his one and only son so that we could know him so that we could be restored to right mm -hmm. relationship with him. And I love the statement that the most important mm -hmm. relationship we can have here on earth is the personal relationship with Jesus. Dr. Charles Stanley said that, right. And if you want to jumpstart that personal relationship with Jesus, we want to give you that opportunity. You can send us a DM on Instagram if that's the decision that you're making. We'd love to follow up with next steps and resources. You could also get a hold of us on line on our website is www.fyi-podcast.com. Mm -hmm. If you want to start a growing personal relationship with Jesus. And, um, we'll also link in the show notes, a way that you can find a local church mm -hmm. or a campus ministry, maybe Chi Alpha in your area or a college ministry, a local church. And so there's ways to get mm -hmm. connected, but should we do one more thing for fun? Let's do one more thing for fun. What's that? You know what it is, babe? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. <laughs> okay. So one of our friends is named JP, Pastor Jonathan Pakluda. He led the porch for many 
years. Yep. He has a few popular podcasts, one mm -hmm. of them called Becoming Something. He's the lead pastor of Harris Creek Baptist Church in Texas. And what if we bring him onto the show today? I think we totally should bring him on the show today. I mean, let's do it. He has a heart for relationships. So wow. let's ask him a couple of questions. Hopefully you can tune in and have some takeaways. Like I said before, we are not God. We're not the Holy Spirit. We have experiences. We just turn to the word of God when we unpack some of these questions. So you may disagree to disagree, um, but we just want you to hear from JP and maybe you could get something from him. Hey, what's up, JP? Hey, thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm excited to be with you guys today. One thing that I'm very passionate about is specifically the topic of purity, not just sexual purity, but living a life that is truly pure, that is truly authentic, that is truly dedicated to God and how we take care of our, our spiritual beings, our physical beings, our emotional, you know, from our thoughts to our actions and everything in between. And we know that you um, wrote the book. Um, I would just love to hear more about that because the book talks or takes um, just precedence. It looks at the myths. It looks at the misconceptions and the fairy tales that are believed about dating today and replaces them with truth. And from that truth, one, um, one who's maybe intended on getting married, we are also created to crave relationships. And this is, you know, the embodiment of true love with marriage rates as, as low as they possibly are, divorce rates as high as they've ever been, um, even more so in the midst of COVID. And this is a must, uh, must be talked about message. And you wrote about some of these things in your book. Will you just share with the audience and with us today and expound upon what spurred this passion in your heart to write this book? And, and can you give us a little glimpse into what we can expect on uh, March 2nd if we want to order that? Yeah, imagine with leaders, like I would just say, imagine with me um, or think about the division that's in our land, the problems that are in our land. Like it, it's, this is, um, it's not completely unprecedented in history. Mm -hmm. It's unprecedented in our lifetime that we would see a country as divided as we are, that's politically, True. racially, socioeconomically, um, faith-wise, like we, we, there's so much disunity so many challenges, so many, so much rioting, uh, a lot of hate, um, just a lot of problems in our midst, which for ministers, it's a lot of opportunity to do work. But I think foundationally, the issue is, the solution to the issue is Jesus. I believe that. That sounds a little trite or cliche. But if we were to, to really dig in, um, one of the major problems at the foundation of the division that we see is, is, um, the family unit, the, the dissolving of the family. And if you think about how to solve the problems in our land, if you're really going to get it at the foundation, it's going to be when boy meets girl dating. Yep. And so I don't know that we fully understand the implications of how poorly we've dated has on all of the problems that we see mm -hmm. in our land. And so in a way, like if I was to say it in a big vision way, it's like you change dating, you change the world. And I don't want to just change dating to change dating. I want to redeem it. I want to move back to what was God's desires for relationships being built? What, what did he, what did, what does he want when he looks down and he sees us do this thing called dating? Dating is a new thing. It's about 120 years old. And so before 120 years ago, nobody went on a date, date and dating entered the English language as a euphemism for prostitution. To go on a date meant to exchange sexual favors um, uh, for an experience, which if you look at the way the world dates today, it's, it, we're not that far off. Wow. But even in the church, it's a mess. Uh, I mean, there's amazing godly women at home who feel like they just have been forgotten and overlooked, that no guys are asking them out. You have the passivity and apathy of men uh, that, that don't want to... Uh, be courageous or or do something uncomfortable like asking a girl out uh, you have guys <laughs> yeah initiate you have guys who feel like girls always say no that their standards too high wow. that they can't meet those standards that they want them to be perfect um you have people sliding into dms ghosting like just like there's no love there's no there's no like hey i'm really going to care for you i want to leave you better than i found you we all have this i want to use you up and then move on to the next kind of mentality, even if we don't realize it. 
uh, you have the church, which has elevated marriage above singleness, which is unbiblical right. and wrong right. and not true, not consistent with the teachings of Paul or Jesus or the Holy Spirit or the Bible. Um, and and you have, as you said, marriage, people are getting married later, they're getting right. married less, and marriages are failing more. Marriages aren't lasting. We have more um, resources available to us to help us. We have dating apps, dating sites. A compatibility tests, personality tests, and professional matchmakers. And yet we're getting worse and worse at this mm -hmm. if, if the success is a lasting marriage. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying something has to change. And to change it, we've got to figure out what's going on, what's going wrong. Because there's a lot of people just continuing to date that way that is absolutely disastrous. And they, they haven't lifted their head up to think, oh, gosh, I'm doing this all wrong. Mm -hmm. Like I'm taking my cues and advice from Hollywood, who has the highest divorce rates of anywhere on the planet Earth, and they're the ones that are teaching the class on how to do this. Right. I've got to figure out a new way. And so that's that's why I've written and updated. And I really think it has the potential to be that resource that changes the way that we date. I, I, I don't care. I don't give a rip about selling books. I really don't. Like I, I've got a ministry that supports our family. I care deeply about helping people. And I just read this book for Audible. So I read the audio and I got to the end of it and I was, I was tearful. Like I was, I was crying emotional because I just was so thankful. I, it's the only resource I've worked on, be it all, you know, books I've written, blogs I've written, articles, whatnot, write, writing projects. It's the only one I got to the end of it. I'm like, I wouldn't change a thing. That's, like that's, that's exactly what I wanted to say. And, um, and I, I think it's going to be extremely helpful. So if you're a leader of, of young adult ministry, if you're a leader of young adults, if you're single yourself or you know someone's single, like I, I just encourage you to pick up Outdated anywhere books are sold. And um, as, as my friend said, it comes out March 2nd. And, and I think you're going to see it, to, you know, find that it's going to be helpful. We agree. And one of the things that I've observed, JP, of your heart, from afar, really, is that you've had a really unique vantage point of pastoring young adults for the better part of a couple of decades, now leading a church. And with both of those uh, come the opportunity to speak into lives through counseling, through premarital sessions, like premarriage mentoring, things like helping build strong marriages, officiating weddings. And I think that it's like the time is now and you don't have to spend much time in young adult ministry to figure out that many people want to meet their future spouse. Right. <laughs> and that's not just common among women or common among men. It's common among humans. Like yeah. I think one of the prevailing thoughts of, I remember just, I'll speak to my own experience being a young adult. I remember just walking into rooms sometimes and wondering, is she here right now? Because I had an epiphany. I was probably 19, 20. And I realized I did the math. I'm pretty good at math. You'll see. I realized she's probably alive right now. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and so then I started walking into rooms and I was like, I, could she be here? I wonder yeah. if she's here. And so I think that for us to serve those that we lead well, mm -hmm. we need to have hard conversations. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I look at the rise of online dating. I look at the amount of apps that have just launched during quarantine, a pandemic, mm -hmm. because yeah. dating, like I know people who are close to me that are single and they've described, where do we go? Yeah. What do we do when the world shuts down? And right. so <laughs> can you just go off script here, a second JP and talk for the listener who's wondering, like, should I make an online dating profile? Yeah. Should I, yeah. you know, put, am I putting myself out there? Am I, you know, yeah. can you talk about your perspective? And then from a, just a, as a Christ follower, like encouraging your brother or sister here. Yeah. Let me say a couple things just about online dating. So I, I, I'm a simple guy, I teach the Bible and, and I never want to be guilty of the sin of legalism, you know, being more firm than the scripture is. In the Bible, obviously, it doesn't address dating anywhere because, I, I, as I said, it's a new idea. Um, the uh, And so it certainly doesn't address online dating because the, the Internet, too, is a new idea, even newer idea. And so, uh, so the Bible does not condemn online dating, and so neither do I. Uh, but I would say you need to be wise mm -hmm. in the way you go about it. And so there's there's three principles 
that I think will be helpful quickly. I'd say one, you need to know profiles lie. So never trust a profile. Like I can be anybody I want to be online. I can, I can have memory verses. I can tell you where I go to church. I can, I can research Jesus and I can be super Christian online and, and an agent of Satan in real life. So just, just know that profiles lie. Uh, two, do not enable um, apathy or passivity. And I think there's a lot of guys that are thrilled uh, about a movement called online dating because they don't have to actually face a woman. And so I, I can just tell you in ministry that I've met with people who are really, really courageous behind the keyboard. But when you meet them in real life, they're, they're, it's very, very different. And, and so you need to know that, that it's not the same. You can't, and by the way, you can't date online. Uh, dating has to be done in person. Really, when we talk about online dating, we're talking about online initiating. Um, and you want, you're choosing your problems in dating, right? And, and if, you, if you choose, be careful to choose passivity. And sometimes when you do online dating, you're choosing passivity. And I, I get, I get emails. I, I do this thing on Friday on Instagram called Friday Q and A, and I get two thousand questions and I answer about a hundred of them, and um, and every single Friday somebody will say I'm I'm married to my husband. He's he's extremely apathetic, and passive. What do I do? And I'm, I'm like, man, that's who you chose. <laughs> and that's yep. the that's mm -hmm. the real bummer. Is he could have chosen anybody, and that's that's what you went for. And so here you are. And so be careful not to enable passivity or apathy. And then thirdly, and this is the one where it really stumps people sometimes is, is I just like, if you're going to date online or initiate online and don't, don't go on a date with a stranger mm -hmm. and people are like, but that's all online dating is. And I'm just like, not all dating apps are created equal. And, uh, and so I would be a bigger fan of the ones that find your friends in common where you can call them and say, Hey, I'm going to go on this date with Mark. Is Mark a good guy? He said he's going to church here. Is that true? Mark told, tells me he serves in the nursery. Is that true? And just kind of check references. Because I just don't want to be, you know, people ask me also, um, you know, how do I find out if they're a Christian or not when I'm on a date? And I'm like, man, I hope you find out if they're a Christian long before you get on a date. Okay. You know? yes. I don't want to be sitting at a table. And so I'm just, I'm a big fan of arranged marriage. That's what the, the scripture lends itself to. But here's what I mean by that. That's a dangerous soundbite. I'm a big fan. <laughs> We all leaned your, in, just so you know yeah, that we yeah, all yeah, leaned yeah. in there. Well, I'm doing I'm doing a contest, you know, with outdated. I'm I'm doing an arranged marriage, and uh, and so it's 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 created some questions. But here's what arranged marriage is in my mind today in 2021, is it's your friends and family saying, "Man, you guys, y'all, that makes sense. Like y'all should y'all should spend some time together." And so it's not like meeting somebody at the altar for the first time. It is just your, you know, Song of Solomon, it says their friends and family praise their love more than wine. So basically saying the friends and family praised what they had more than the, the party in and of itself. They, they loved the way they loved each other. And, uh, and I think that's what a, a modern arranged marriage is. It's just your friends and family um, saying this makes sense. And so for my single friends, what I would do is I would go to all your married friends and I would express to them a desire to be married. If you desire marriage, say, just, I really want to be married. Do you know of anybody? Will you keep me in mind and be thinking as you meet and interact with single people? Um, if you know of anyone that you think I would be a good match for, would you please let me know or let them know? And, uh, and I think that's a really loving thing. And I know that sounds crazy or archaic, but I have seen that work so well. Like that has been a blessing to some friends of mine. So I recommend, I commend that to you. Yeah, I think that's a great approach of recognizing, you know, what our friends and families think and say about the person that we're dating, or maybe the person we are becoming in that relationship. Hey, one more time. We just want to say thank you so much to Jonathan Pakluda. He's the author of Outdated, phenomenal mm -hmm. book, mm -hmm. phenomenal book about dating and engagement and marriage right. relationships. Right. And so we'll link his book to the show notes. And uh, we're excited about this podcast. And as we close, we just want to let you know that there's going to be new, another episode dropping next week. Micah, what is the question we're going to talk about? The question is, how can I overcome my temptation? Oh my gosh. Ooh, that's good. So we can talk about anything from lust to pornography to the condition of our hearts. So tune in next week because we kick off a new episode every Friday. And you can look at that as an opportunity to end your week or begin your weekend strong. So until next time, this is Josiah and Micah Kennedy with F3.
Fire Podcast.